Good morning. Good morning. Little beautiful souls joining the, yes. joining the march. It's great. So true. All right. So let's talk about uh, some of the stuff you're going to be talking about this week. But all brand new shows are right this week. Again, Dr. Oh, I like the pocket square, by the way. Very dapper. Um, kids 5 to 11, right? Okay. So now we're kind of moving into that. And we could be very close to getting okays, correct, for the vaccine? Well, we'll see. I don't want people getting whiplash from these announcements. So what happened was the company making the vaccine Pfizer, and it's a good vaccine, used one third of the usual dose on children in elementary school, you know, five to 11 year olds, 2,268 kids. So it's not a lot of kids because it's hard to do trials on kids. They have a solid antibody response, similar to what you see in older kids and, and young adults. Uh, they also had the, the, the common side effects seen in teens, but there's too few young people to really look for the rare complications, like the kinds of things that held the FDA back from approving the booster widely, like myocarditis. So it's good news. The FDA is going to consider the actual data. We haven't seen it yet. It's not been published uh, by the end of the month. And if it's what, it say, what everyone says it is, then by the end of this calendar year, then parents who desire it will be able to vaccinate their children, I believe. So the FDA, now it's their chance, right, Dr. Oz, to take a look at it and make their decision. The FDA's got to look at it, and it doesn't always come out like you predict. For example, you know, the big news over the weekend was the FDA advisory panel made up of a bunch of really smart doctors who only think about vaccines, you know, that aren't interested in the politics mm -hmm. around vaccines, looked at the booster data, and they said, we're just not going to approve it for everybody because we don't right. want a cookie-cutter approach for this topic. We want to customize and, and pick the people who are most vulnerable and give them the booster because we're not sure it makes sense. Let's just do the math here. If the chance of you dying or getting bad complications from COVID is one-tenth of what it used to be because you got vaccinated, well then there's a lot less benefit of getting a booster. And for young people, that becomes so small that the group of doctors said, hey, listen, we're going to hold back. There's some side effects we're going to look into. Plus, we got time. Let the Israelis who've already done it watch with their population over the next few months we'll see if there's a real benefit of the booster or it's just a small increase in which case they won't push this hard yeah i mean what what's the uh, benefit of what's being the, the first rush? ones to rush out there and do it dr Oz? we can like you said we can watch israel and let me ask you this the bottom line would you if, if this if the fda comes out and says yes we're okay with the vaccine for kids 5 to 11 would you want your grandkids to get it I don't think my daughter is going to give the, the grandkids the vaccine. Uh, I, just, I, I believe the kids were already exposed so much that they had it. Um, there's a value of having had the actual illness. Uh, if they did have it, they had no symptoms. That also makes her feel comfortable. And again, there have been some tragic cases uh, of young people infected with COVID, but mm -hmm. relatively small. And many of those children had other pre-existing conditions. So it's unclear the benefits. She won't be the first on her block to, to vaccinate mm -hmm. her children. Mm -hmm. So give me your thoughts on that. Let's say you've had COVID and you're considering it um, and you ha haven't received the vaccine. Would you get an antibody test first and then maybe consider moving forward with your decision? Aha, now you're getting to the really difficult issue. This mm -hmm. is my show that, uh, later this week with the Surgeon General. So far, the U.S. government has said it doesn't matter if you had the actual infection. It doesn't really help you. Well, that's not really true. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not true in any other infection we know of. Having had the mumps protects you against the mumps mm -hmm. and other illnesses likewise. So you don't want to get COVID, but if you already had it and got through it, you need to get an extra shot. My mom, who lives in Turkey, uh, got COVID. Uh, and when she recovered, they did not give her two shots of Pfizer. They gave her one. That's the law in Turkey. It's not an option. Many countries will not give you an extra shot in the UK, same. So our nation needs to start kept coming to grips with this. Rand Paul, senator from Kentucky, has refused to get the vaccine, arguing he's a doctor, that he's already protected. He already had the illness itself. So why would this be any different than any other virus we know about? I think we've got to take this seriously uh, and start giving people the protection, the, the comfort that they are protected from having had this illness, especially for Delta. Because if you got vaccinated and you get Delta, that Delta variant you had will give you significant additional protection. Checking antibody levels, which is your question, mm -hmm. it's, first of all, it's cumbersome, but I'm not sure it's the best way to, to know if you're actually protected because there are other ways your immune system can protect you besides antibodies. Good point. You know, that's the frustrating thing, isn't it, Dr. Oz, that you have really smart people who you trust saying one thing and another group of really smart people who you trust saying something different. Is it, I mean, it, is it politically motivated or are people just guessing or we just don't have enough data? That's what makes it so hard, right? Well, when you mix politics and medicine, you get politics. So that is definitely a part of this and has become more political than ever before. But there was always politics within medicine. I think, for example, what the FDA did was brave and it gives comfort to vaccine hesitant people 
that scientists are actually making this, these decisions, not politicians who are trying to figure out what will poll the best. So I think that everyone is beginning to recognize that politicizing this is hurting us all. Uh, but there's no question that's been part of the process. That's why when the White House says, we're gonna start giving boosters to everybody on the 20th of September, and then the FDA panel says, well, hold on, Tiger, mm -hmm. that's not justified. And then you have the NIH saying, well, no, 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 the FDA is not right. You know, people start looking like back and forth, as I was yes. describing earlier with whiplash. Yeah, this is an believe? FDA decision. They're used to being pushed on, on these topics by companies and by special interest groups. Let them resist those pressures and make the best decision for America. So let's talk about what's coming up on your show on Wednesday. Uh, you're tackling the issue of uh, the science behind the mask. Well, there are a lot of people fighting about the masks uh, and there's not enough humbleness in this. The reality is the, the masks do have a benefit in reducing particles getting into your face, but that doesn't mean that they work. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're if you have the great mask, but you don't wear it, that's not so good. If you got to take it off every half hour because it doesn't, you know, it bothers you or if it doesn't fit you correctly, it's not going to be all that effective. So we look at all the masks, look at the fit and compliance issues. And here's the basic story. If you are vulnerable because you did not get vaccinated, you need to beef up your game by wearing a KN95. If you've got, if you've been vaccinated, you can go with the cloth mask as long as it fits you well. And it's got to cover the nose and the mouth, right? That's the, yeah, that's the key, right? That's the Cover the nose and the mouth. But remember, the best mask of all is the one you'll wear. Anywhere you put it on. There you okay. go. Thanks. How about that? We have a yeah. new catchphrase. There you go. The best mask is the one you wear. <laughs> Dr. Oz, brand new shows all week right here, 1 o'clock on Fox 10. So great talking to you as always, Dr. Oz. Great to see you, Dr. Oz. Take care. All right. Talk to you later.